and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Uh, if you haven't seen the show before, the point of this show is to um, uh, help you, who, like our friends Frank and Mary, uh, live in Westboro, and their goal in life is to live in their house until they die, uh, to help you live a happy life here in Westboro. The COVID-19 version of this show is to help you as well as Frank and Mary, who are now just trying to figure out how to deal with things because they're stuck in their house all the time. So um, my wonderful co-host, if you've seen the show before, you know, is um, your selectman, my friend Shelby Marshall. Um, and, and she's the co-host because she kind of knows all of the people that we really should be talking to to deal with all of these issues. So Shelby, you've got some wonderful guests for us here today. You want to tell us who we got? Great. Thanks, Arthur. Good morning. Um, welcome. And uh, look, I'm so excited that our first guest today is Roger Anderson. Um, he is the Director of Wellness for the Westboro Public School Systems. And he's going to talk to us today about the importance of uh, staying physically active um, during this time when we are uh, sometimes confined or certainly we're, as we're social distancing. Uh, so, Roger, welcome to our show and uh, tell us about the Westboro Fitness Challenge. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm really excited to speak to this, the population that watches this show because uh, part of my role as the Director of Wellness for the Westboro Public Schools is to engage the community. So uh, just over a month ago, we closed the doors of the Westboro schools to keep everybody safe and we moved to an online platform and the physical education, health and wellness staff got together. Uh, one of our elementary teachers, Mark Ellis, who teaches at the Hastings School had an idea uh, kind of tied to something we had done a long time ago called the 100 mile challenge. But we created something at this point called the Westboro Fitness and Wellness Challenge. And really, it's, it's a very simple concept. The idea is that any type of exercise that anyone in our community does, anything from chair yoga, for example, to going for a run outside, to taking a walk uh, in the halls of your building or in your neighborhood, um, to heavy lifting in the, in the weight room in your basement, any type of exercise that anybody can do that's safe for them at their level um, counts toward uh, this big challenge. And the way we organized it to make it very simple is that every 10 minutes of exercise that anyone does counts as one mile. Now we know that doesn't always quite equate with riding a bike or running, but it really doesn't matter what type of exercise you do. And that way it's, it's truly accessible to everyone from the very young to the not so young. Uh, and so we created a website and it, I think if this is a good time, I'll, I'll share that on my screen just so people can see what it looks like and we can show people how they can log things. Yeah, Roger, as you're pulling that up, uh, let me just do a sort of voiceover disclaimer here that this is not intended for folks to go, oh, no, there's technology involved. I can't do it. I'm just not familiar. Roger's going to walk us through this um, and then we're going to talk about some really easy ways in which. Um, folks that may not be as technologically savvy or comfortable or even have technology, um, the way you can still engage. So Roger, take it away. Absolutely. And so this is our website page here. Uh, and we kind of have our logo up at the top that says how far in the world we can go. Uh, right on top is, is a video from me describing what it is that we sent out to the kids three weeks ago. We started this on April 1st. And in that time, actually that's only two weeks ago, the Westboro teachers, students, families have covered 36,215 miles. You can see this number right here. That gets updated a few times a day. Um, and we're really excited because that means people in our community have done over 6,000 hours of exercise. And what we know is that, you know, some of the ways that we deal with really stressful times that are really effective is exercising. And that exercising not only benefits our physical health, but it also benefits our emotional and social and well-being. So we're excited about that. When people go ahead and do exercise, one of the things we have our students doing, and I think this is available to all of our seniors, but not mandatory. They don't have to log their miles with us. I would just be really happy if people were out exercising, but I think Shelby, you and I have some ideas about ways that people can be connecting with others and, and utilizing that to log their miles. Right. But I'm just going to take. Go Roger, ahead. Roger, if I can, please. We're, we're getting some 
Okay. Um, I, while I don't think it's critical that folks log their miles, I do want to emphasize that the importance of this challenge is that it is a way for us to maintain our connections in the community. So to the extent that we can talk about how it's easy to do this and how maybe we can engage some friends to help folks that um, to log in and log the miles, I, I think it's important that we all feel like we're still part of something. We're not just stuck in our home. So go ahead. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, if we can, if anybody has the ability, either themselves or perhaps a, a child or a grandchild could log for them, I'm going to show everybody how to do it right here. And, and in a little bit, we'll give you the, the website um, address. So we'll give people time to write that down if they want. But once I've gone outside and done a half an hour walk, I'm going to show everybody how to log those miles. So I would go to our website and I would click right here on this button that says log your miles. Then up comes a form. Okay. Now it asks for an email address. You're welcome to put yours in. But if you're not comfortable doing that or you don't have one or you're going to have your granddaughter or your grandson fill this out for you, you can just put in this random community at Westboro K-12 email. Then you type your first name. My name's Roger. Then your last name, Anderson. Now we have this set up for both our students and teachers and community members. So the next question is, who are you? And I'm in this case gonna put that I'm a Westboro community member. Again, part of our work is to collect the data with our kids. So we do ask you if you're a community member just to hit that button one more time. And then we go down to how many miles did you complete today? Now, I, I cannot emphasize enough that it really can be any type of wellness activity. So if I, you know, did some mindful meditation or anything, it all counts. But we're using the example today. I did 30 minutes of walking, which is three 10-minute segments, which gives me three miles. If I have other family members doing it, I can click that they did it with me. And then all I do is hit next and submit. And now my miles, the exercise I did today, goes toward that community challenge big number, which is right here. So it won't update instantly while people do it. We're not quite that technologically savvy. Right. Um, but other things on the website that I think are kind of neat and interesting, there's a, there's a video that people can watch or share with other people that I posted right here. Uh, it's about three minutes long. We have a printable calendar if people want to print one out and keep track of their own miles. We do have a screencast on how to fill out the form. They just saw it so they can refer back to this, but it's there. And then one of the neat things we have is a milestone page. So when we started this, we didn't, didn't quite think we'd go as far as fast as we have, but we have some individual milestones. We have some students that are exercising for a you know, a good amount of time each day, playing outside with their families, going for walks, doing exercise in their house, doing yoga. And as they get to different distances, so if I've accumulated 32 miles, the distance from Westboro to Fenway Park is 32 miles. And there's a video right here with a virtual tour of Fenway Park. We also, as a community, we thought, well, we might get a few thousand miles pretty quickly. So we created a whole bunch of milestones. You know, we know it's 1,474 miles to the Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge is 3,000 miles away. I've got a staff member from London, so he wanted to put in that London was 3,295 miles away. We've worked our way all the way down now to the point that we have we've gone around the circumference of the Earth already, and we're chasing beyond that. We know we got a big goal out there of, of reaching the moon which is 238,000 miles away. And we'll have kind of a celebration for that. But for each you know, distance, we've got a little piece of information there that we can share with people. So I just think that's a really fun way uh, for people to you know, kind of track our group progress. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. So let's talk a little bit about um, you know, the, the technology piece. So I wanna emphasize um, when Roger and I talked about this and sharing it with the community, um, I was uh, I was thrilled, but then I was like, oh God, folks are gonna feel like I don't I, this is too much. I don't know how to, you know, how to log in. So most of us have neighbors. Um, many of our neighbors are comfortable in using this form. So if you're not, 
maybe call your neighbor and say, hey, did you hear about the Westboro Fitness and Wellness Challenge? I really want to participate. Would you mind helping me? Uh, you might have a, a grandchild uh, who, God knows, they understand the technology. So as Roger said, that they could help. Um, you could put together a neighborhood challenge. So, um, you know, if you live in, um, let's say you live at Orchard Hill and you're like, hey, you know what? I wonder if my neighbors know about this. Tell them about this challenge and and then, you know, together kind of put together a little neighborhood challenge. Could you guys collectively, individually and collectively get to Fenway Park together? Um, and again, I think to emphasize, um, it's really any type of exercise. So, um, and you can do it inside or outside. So, and, and the importance is to do it safely based on, you know, certainly your, your level of, um, um, you know, the physical ability. Arthur, what do you think? I was going to, I was just going to ask, did you set it, you, you talked about the fact that you had no idea kind of what to expect when you were doing this. Did, did you have a, a, a sense going in as to like how many miles you thought you'd be trying to achieve or how many miles you thought you could get to compared to what yeah, has happened? With our department, we had a long debates about, about what our goals were going to be. And what we finally decided is we really don't know what the end line timing of this is going to be. So okay. somebody said, well, why not shoot for the moon, literally? And so, you know, 238,900 miles away is the moon. <laughs> and we thought we'd throw that on there, you know, they like literally shoot for the moon. So we don't know quite exactly what the end line is going to be. And, and, you know, for us at the schools, we're going to keep this rolling as long as we're, you know, in our online portion of school. But I think for the broader community, I mean, the benefits of exercise just, you know, can't be overstated, even if it's very minimal exercise. And as, as Shelby said, the ability to connect with other people that you know and, and share and do this together just brings great strength to the whole process. And, and yeah, and you know, uh, one of the, I, I gave someone a preview that we'd be doing the show and she immediately emailed me and said, do I need a Fitbit? Where do I get one? You don't need a Fitbit. No. All you need to do is have a watch. How long do you exercise? You don't even need a watch. You can look at when you leave the house or when you go do your exercise and come back and say, you know, I, I did something for 10 minutes. Fantastic. I will. I would just. I would just say th this reminds me of. I know that I think it was Shelby that had mentioned in an earlier show that the the, the there it, it, there's like the silver lining to COVID nineteen is that it's just causing people to reconceptualize in so many ways. And the notion of this being a community goal that everybody can participate in, right? And that you're getting through this, getting some of these some of your high school kids, right? And all right. and all the grandchildren of the people that I talk to all the time and great grandchildren, you know, to be having a reason to actually help grandma do something yeah. on their laptop. And grandma never wanted to do this laptop. Right. <laughs> but now, finally, there's like this, like, really, you know, come on, grandma, let's get pumped up here. You know, it's a it's a Westboro thing. It's really cool. It's just great. Just well, great. and sense. I'll just add one more piece to that. Sometimes I know grandkids may have find it difficult to kind of have that screen interaction with their grandparents. This gives this is a great conversation piece for grandparents to say to initiate that conversation and say, "Hey, you know, I need some help with this challenge." And you know, and uh, kids love to feel purposeful. I know adults do. So, uh, Roger, thank you so much for bringing this to us. Um, we're going to post that um, website, right, um, yes. Aiden? Give me a thumbs up, Westboro TV. Awesome. Uh, so folks can see this, write it down, and uh, join in the fitness and the fun. Well, we appreciate it so much, and, and uh, I'd be so happy to hear about how it's going from anybody. And my email is right at the bottom of our webpage. So anybody who finds it to be beneficial or has a great story, please share that along, and I wish everybody the best. Thanks, Roger. Thanks, Roger. Thanks very much. Take care. Hi, folks. Well, welcome back to Frank and Mary, the COVID-19 series edition. Uh, our second guest today is uh, none other than the very famous and awesome uh, Representative Carolyn Dykema. Uh, she is one of Westboro's three state representatives. Uh, Representative Dykema, so happy to have you on the show. Thank you and welcome. Well, thanks for having me, Shelby and Arthur. It's nice to see you. And uh, we were just chatting a few minutes ago, and I want to repeat what I said, which is, you know, this is such a great opportunity to connect with people in the community. I know Westboro, one of the great things about Westboro and about representing Westboro is that it is such a tight-knit community where everyone supports each other, and I think that's needed 
uh, more so than ever right now, as we know. And we're having to get a little creative in how we connect with our friends and neighbors. And uh, we're all getting a little better with this technology. And so uh, this is a, a real educational opportunity, I think, for everyone, as well as uh, just a community connection opportunity. So thanks for having me. Great. And um, I thought maybe what I'd start out, um, Shelby, is just by explaining uh, as a state representative kind of what my role is right now uh, in this critical time. And also mention that I work as a team, as you know. Uh, so there are three state representatives that represent Westboro. Uh, I represent Precinct 2 along with Representative Danielle Gregoire and Representative Hannah Kane. Uh, and we also work very closely with our Senator Jamie Eldridge uh, in the Senate. And so right now, um, you know, government is playing a more important role than ever in coordinating response to COVID-19, uh, not only to the public health crisis and making sure that we, um, you know, keep everyone safe and everyone healthy, uh, but also in the economic piece of this, which is a result of really essentially what someone called a um, an induced coma of our, our you know society and our economy we've had to really shut everything down to be able to keep people safe so government is playing a really important role in how we do that um, safely and efficiently and so um, I thought I would just talk a little bit about how that's happening you know we work as a team um, so our your state legislative delegation works very closely with not only municipal officials like you, Shelby, and the on the board um, and community organizations, but also we work with our federal delegation. So a lot of what's going on right now and a lot of the support that's coming to both our state and our municipalities, as well as some of the policy, um, is coming from the federal government. So we're in pretty regular touch with our federal um, delegation, which include, includes uh, Representative McGovern um, in Congress, as well as both of our U.S. Senators, uh, Senator Warren and Senator Markey, to really make sure that things are as seamless as they can possibly be um, for residents of, of our community. And I thought I would talk a little bit about specifically, we had talked about, um, you know, federal response and federal aid and how is the federal government supporting us at the local level. Um, so there, um, first of all, you know, what I'm seeing and when I'm talking to people, um, and I still maintain open communication uh, via technology, uh, even though I can't be out in the community, um, what I'm hearing is a lot of um, need for um, support for unemployment insurance, as you can imagine. Um, job loss has been pretty significant, which we hope will be short, short lived, but it doesn't make it any easier for folks who are um, who need support right now. Um, we also have a lot of our small businesses. Um, while Westboro has been tremendous in really um, encouraging people to support our local small businesses, those that are open, like our restaurants, um, offering drive through service, there are a lot of our um, small businesses in particular who are having to shut down, who are having a hard time. So the federal government about, uh, I guess it was about two weeks ago now, passed a fairly large uh, stimulus bill called the CARES Act, which provides a lot of support for us here in Massachusetts around these issues. And I just will highlight a few of the things that that bill does. Uh, first of all, it expands unemployment insurance. So we have a traditional unemployment insurance program here, which is largely funded by employers, which um, is, is continuing to operate obviously, but that has been enhanced by the federal government with some additional payments for those who um, apply for and receive unemployment benefits. Uh, also, and importantly, because this is a big need that we're hearing, is those folks that are self-employed who are not traditionally able to participate in unemployment insurance uh, are now, through this federal legislation, able to participate. So I've had a lot of questions. Um, maybe um, folks who are watching here are unemployed themselves or have family members who are unemployed. Those uh, That application for self-employed unemployment benefits is expected to go online April 30th. So, um, and I wanna uh, highlight, you know, information and sharing information and how to get this information out to the community is, is challenging. Um, and at the end, I will say this again, but I wanna point people to my newsletter um, where I try to get a lot of this information out into the people's hands that really need it. So um, Shelby, maybe if you could remind me at the end of uh, the call before we get off, I can give people information about how to sign up for that. Um, one of the other important things that this federal legislation does is it has a new uh, PPP, we call it, the Paycheck Protection Program, 
which allows small businesses under 500 employees to get a, a loan, some of which can be forgiven, um, to support them through this hard time through the federal government. So that's being um, given out to folks through our local banks. So if people are looking for these loans, they should go to their local banker um, and talk to them. They've all been made aware of this program. Um, and the online, the application is online, so no one has to go uh, into the bank to be able to do this. Uh, as with everything else that we're doing these days, you know, everything is being done uh, remotely to the extent that we can. And then the other important thing that people um, care about, I know, is sort of how is our state government functioning? How are our local supports functioning? Those things um, that are so close to the the ground, so to speak, in our communities that are supporting people, like our schools, for example. And I know your previous uh, speaker was, you know, from the schools. Um, how are we continuing to do that and provide funding for those needs? And so we're continuing to operate uh, at the state level while working with our federal government. We're still um, business as usual in the state legislature, although remotely. So we're still passing legislation, although it's very focused on COVID-19. Um, we are still able to get things done um, remotely to be able to keep these um, important important programs in place, as well as to create some new ones. Uh, uh, and I'll share just a quick question on that, just logistically, are you actually doing that via these types of calls when you say remote legislation, or are you physically in chambers and physically separated? I'm, I think viewers might be interested in that. Sure. No, it's it's uh, it's a whole new world for sure. And believe it or not, we're in Massachusetts, one of the highest tech uh, states in the country, and we really don't have great technology at the state house. And I think Arthur was mentioning the silver lining earlier. I think this uh, ability to upgrade our technology to do some new things is going to be one of the big silver linings um, from from the the pandemic. But so we are um, not currently in a formal session right now where we take formal votes. Um, we are passing legislation um, with a voice vote, which means that we are all essentially um, on board and uh, agreeing with the legislation that's gone forward so far, which has not been a, a big number of things. It's been a, a bill to support municipalities in getting their local budgets done. Um, there is a bill to support first responders that's um, having what we call a virtual hearing uh, where you know, wow. we are encouraging testimony via mail as opposed to being in an in-person hearing. Um, that said, we just yesterday had a Ways and Means hearing. And we can talk about a little bit about the state budget in a few minutes, but um, we, um, are, we actually could tune in and log in to a virtual hearing which had three participants who were at the state house, the chairs of our Ways and Means Committee, as well as uh, Secretary of a &F, and um, we, we participated and they had testimony from experts who came in online, just like I am right now, giving the economic forecast for the state. So we are doing everything we can and we're still advancing the technology to hopefully actually be able to do some voting and some debate online potentially. Carolyn, could you speak to the, um, the uh, skilled nursing facility or nursing home resource uh, line that was recently developed? Because so many of our uh, viewers um, have friends, loved ones who, you know, sadly have been in social distancing and not been able to have visitors. Um, and so there's, there's been, you know, there really has been a gap of what's going on there and how do I reach my loved one and I'm concerned and what's going on and are there COVID cases in that particular facility? Can you just talk a little bit about that resource that's been set up? Sure. So as you know, Shelby, one of the, the first initiatives that was taken at the state level was to really uh, close down our nursing home facilities to visitors, knowing that uh, they really have challenges and both they have a high risk population and they're in very close physical proximity. Um, so very high risk for getting getting the virus. So um, there's been a lot of attention on these facilities. I don't know if you've you've seen the news, but they are, in fact, showing that a lot of the cases coming out of Massachusetts are coming from these facilities. Yes, and yes. in our calls with Secretary Sutters, who's head of the command center, um, talks about how we manage these nursing home facilities and keep them as safe as possible is a big focus of our efforts. So one of the things that we were hearing, like you, Shelby, is if you can't go in and visit your loved one uh, in one of these facilities, it's very anxiety provoking for people. 
And these facilities are supposed to be providing information regularly to the families of those who are in their facilities and answering their questions. Uh, unfortunately, not all facilities have been as responsive as we would have hoped. So um, to, to address this for, for folks that want more information about any given facility or having a hard time getting information, there was a centralized hotline set up and I'll provide that number now for people who want it. It's 617-660-5399, which is the nursing home specific state hotline for people to call and get information and get support if they have questions about a loved one. Thank you very much. Um, I know in the remaining so time, we, we, should, we should really make sure that that we'll make sure that number is prominently featured throughout right. this, not only just now, but at the end, because that's that's a crucial line. I know, you know, Shelby and I, we both got dozens, dozens of people who are trying to confront this right now. And, it, sure. and it's wonderful that, that, the, that you folks have really stepped up on that. It's great. And we'll also, um, Carolyn, you mentioned your uh, newsletter. We'll make sure that we put that um, on the screen so folks can you know, take a screenshot of that or pause their feed um, so that they can write that down. I, I strongly encourage folks to read it. Um, it's, it's extremely informative. Um, so um, anything else you'd like to add in the closing minutes that we have? Um, you know, I guess I would just um, like to say thank you to everyone in our communities who's been so great about the social distancing. We all realize how incredibly hard it is, uh, especially through the holidays, to not be able to be with family. Uh, it was incredibly hard for our family. Uh, we were lucky enough, I've got my brother out in Wisconsin with his five little kids, and we were able to, to zoom in with my mom, uh, which is not ideal, and we couldn't be around the table together, but at least we could do so remotely. Um, we'll get through this. You know, we've got a, a great team of people, really smart people here in Massachusetts working on this for us and just, uh, you know, support each other and uh, look forward to to uh, doing some great things and seeing better days ahead. Okay. And could I just add, I think for a lot of us, we really appreciate the way that government is functioning right now mm -hmm. and the kind of cohesiveness that people really feel that like this is really important. And, you know, it, it, it's all about the public good and it makes a lot of difference, you know, to just feel like the, the whole everybody's on the same team here. That's it's so wonderful. So thank yes. you. Thank you very much for coming on. We really, really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Great so to see thank, you. Thank you, Shelby. You continue to do this. We continue to get these wonderful guests. This is because Shelby's so famous. Everybody. Yeah, knows. right, right. She, she draws all these people. Thank you very much uh, for to 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 you, Representative Dykema and, and uh, Shelby. And we'll look forward. Thank you, folks, for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro, the COVID-19 version. Thank you. Be well, be safe.